In 2026, thousands of vibe coders are gonna become millionaires, and this video is about making sure you have every possible chance to be in that club. This isn't gonna be a vague, aspirational video, but a rapid implementation plan to make sure that 2026 is your most profitable year ever. You see, back in the early 2000s, blogs were considered kinda of like toys, but then bloggers became millionaires while legacy media collapsed. I watched that happening and built a successful content marketing agency writing blog posts for software companies. We worked with software Software founders, some of them became unicorns. We also worked with some of the largest software companies in the world. And I can tell you with extreme confidence that vibe coding is currently in the same phase that blogs were back in the early 2000s. Now's the time to surf that next wave because by the end of 2026, a lot of these techniques are gonna become commonplace and that window of opportunity is gonna close. Today I wanna share with you exactly how I plan to do this so you can start 2026 with my 10 years plus of experience. Here's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna start with the three most common traps that I saw founders fall into over and over again, including one that really nobody's talking about that ties directly into the hardest part of all of this. That's the product market fit. Then I'm gonna show you how to go wide so you can get outside of your own head so that you're not limited by a few small ideas and you can capture the biggest opportunities possible. From there, we're gonna pass that list through four filters so you can focus on what's most likely to succeed. By the end of this video, you're gonna have a rock solid plan for making 2026 the year that you look back on as the year that every Everything changed. All right, starting with the three major traps that I've seen many founders fall into, the number one is just having one idea, going all in, placing all bets on one idea. This brings me to the mini bets thesis, where I've seen something that successful indie hackers have in common with VCs is that they place mini bets. They don't put, go all in on one idea. So my goal for 2026 is to launch 10 different micro startups to see where I can get the most traction. Action. This is going to require aggressive minimalism along with rejecting perfectionism. My North Star for all this is a guy named Peter Levels who has created a very successful portfolio of indie software. And he's got a great quote where he talks about quantity begets quality. So don't think of that rejecting perfectionism as you know building crappy products. You're really buying more lottery tickets, seeing what has legs and what could really truly become a world-class product. Another quote from Peter is that making money online is hard so being prolific gives you more shots at it. This aligns directly with Jeff Bezos, who has many quotes along these same lines, one of which is, if you double the number of experiments you do per year, you're going to double your inventiveness. And we, of course, we know that this aligns directly with venture capitalists, that they have to place many, many bets and that a tiny number of them drive their outsized returns. Here's a couple quotes from successful venture capitalists along those lines. And now with the power of AI, we can rapidly not only prototype, but build real products and get them out into the world in a much faster way than Peter Levels had to go through when he was building his portfolio of software. So this becomes a lot more of a reality than it ever was before. And for the next trap, I'm diving right into the cheat sheet. I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I create. There's over 165 of these immediately available to anybody who joins my Patreon. There's a link in the description to that. I did a ton of research for this video. Video. I refer back to these many, many times uh, throughout the course of building stuff. So the second uh, trap that I want to talk about is being focused on a problem, not just any problem, but really your own problem. I've had much evidence of these successful indie hackers really just building stuff that solves their own problems. And I think, you know, a lot of software founders are sort of getting that idea but that brings me to the third trap here, which I don't think many are getting, is that you need to be focused on specific target audiences. So when I'm talking about placing these 10 different bets, these 10 different micro software startup ideas out there in the world, I wanna group them around specific target audiences that I'm a part of that I know well. So I think the best way to start here is to not just start with that one idea that you've had and not really just start with a problem, as many people do, but start with the audiences that you know about. There's a lot of benefits to this, especially when it comes to that product market fit and marketing and distribution of your new software tool. And the way that we're going to do that is with this prompt right here. We're going to drop this into whatever your favorite large language model is, be that Gemini, Claude, or ChatGPT. And if you've been working with that large language model enough, it probably has a lot of information about you and it can just start to tell you what 
what um, you know tribes you are a part of. I've got a whole separate video all about creating your master context engine. I'm gonna link to that in the description and that walks you through creating a very massive document about you that you can then copy and paste into any large language model that uh, gets them up to speed of who you are and what you're all about, what your goals are. So take a look at that video. I'm gonna grab this prompt and drop that right into Gemini. And I'm gonna give it a link to my master context engine, which is just a long document all about me and what gets me fired up. And that has returned a beautiful list of all of these potential tribes that I'm a part of. Consultant 2.0, absolutely. Fractional C-suite, these are definitely people that I talk to every day. Methodology consultant, AI augmented creators, 100%. So this goes on and on with many of these different audiences that I already understand and that I already have some access to, to be able to get these different software ideas out into the world. What I love about this prompt is it gives us a quick peek at some of the problems these folks are experiencing as well. Now, when we get into building the software itself, we're gonna go way deeper into that, but this is just a really good uh, top level view of what these folks are experiencing. So here's the right mindset that you need to be focused on to avoid those traps, thinking about Many simple ideas, again, going all in on one idea is itself a very bad idea. From there, you want to group the ideas around a handful of audiences and being laser focused on the problems that those audiences are facing. And you can do all that with just that one prompt I showed you. For the next phase, we're going to use AI to go beyond our own thinking and really go wide when we're generating our ideas. This helps us view these audiences and the problems they're experiencing from every different angle to make sure that we are focused on really the best opportunities available to us. So for that, I'm going to use this prompt. This is a pretty long prompt that you can just take a screen grab of, or again, grab the cheat sheet. I'm pasting that sucker right in there and letting it run. This is the part where the cheat sheet can really help. I've gone ahead and built out a very massive 10 plus page a business model reference guide, did a ton of research on all the different business models out there and all of the different categories that indie hackers have been successful in. So this can be really helpful to grab this part and just copy this into the LLM to make sure that you are reviewing um, your opportunities from all of these different angles here. This has returned a ton of good stuff. Many of these are in line with things that I am already pursuing, like this building the second brain for agencies, since I have access to that agency owners group. Some of these might be a little bit more advanced than you're looking for, so you might want to prompt it to really simplify these into micro SaaS or focusing them on one specific problem. But this is definitely helping me break out of the one or two ideas that were top of mind and consider all these different other opportunities out there. The next step is we need to push these through some filters. And the first filter is what I call the everybody has this problem problem. So if you think you found an idea for a simple software tool that solves a problem that almost everybody has, there's probably some hidden complexity there that you're not seeing, or the problem's just not bad enough for anybody to pay for it. So that's the first filter we want to look through. The second filter is making sure that it doesn't require the network effect to be useful. I've met many people who are trying to create the next Facebook of XYZ, and that'd be real easy if you have Facebook's audience, but building that is the really the hard part. So make sure to filter out any that require that network effect. The third filter we want to look at is does this idea require require a behavior change. If your product requires people to abandon workflows that they're comfortable with or think about their problem in a dramatically different way, you're all of a sudden fighting against human psychology, and that's a battle that you just can't win, especially with a simple tool. Here's a prompt you can use to push your ideas through these filters. So there's one final filter that I think is probably the most important filter of all. This is the energy audit filter. So taking a look at those ideas and looking at them thinking, is this something that I'm gonna be fired up enough to work on the weekends and nights to get done? Is this something that I really believe needs to exist in the world? Because that's the passion, that's the drive it's gonna take to push something over the finish line. So give all those ideas one last look and try to find the ones that 
that really spark the most energy inside of you and put those on the final list. You want to repeat all those steps until you've got a list of 10 awesome ideas. This becomes your roadmap for 2026. My ADD brain cannot focus on one project alone. So my idea is to really focus on two heavily and then have other experiments with the others going at the same time as well. So that might be something you want to consider as you move into action for building these different software ideas. Again, I've got all those prompts and a ton more in this cheat sheet, most specifically this SaaS category reference guide and business model index that can really help you make sure that you are considering all the different opportunities out there. I've also got some group coaching options in the Patreon there. So jump on one of these group calls so we can learn from each other and help each other through these different stumbling blocks. And of course you're saying to yourself, well, how do I actually build these things? And that's what this next video is all about. So go check that video out. I will see you over there. Make your dreams come true.